So uh, a couple things out of the way. First of all, we had uh, some players of the week, Jaden Daniels, uh, back to back. Obviously, we had the the off week, but uh, back to back uh, SEC Offensive Player of the Week, um, and then we had uh, Freshman of the Week, uh, Mason Taylor. Pretty good uh, selection there, I would say, and then. Uh, Defensive player Harold, Harold Perkins. So congratulations to those guys based upon uh, their play. Um, you know, just a great atmosphere in Tiger Stadium. Um, I think our fans were, you know, obviously uh, a great motivating factor to creating, you know, one of those environments that um, you know you all um, talk about, but um, you know you want to be able to be part of it. And I think. Uh, you know, our players fed off of that, and uh, certainly they, uh, we had talked about it Thursday that, um, you know, when we were in the stadium that, um, you know, they're going to be out there, but uh, your performance will dictate um, the kind of involvement that our crowd has, and it's going to require um, play in and play out a sustained effort, and I think that that sustained effort by our football team created that sustained atmosphere in our stadium. It wasn't an up and down kind of involvement. It was every single play, um, our crowd was uh, active and involved. And, and I think it had a lot to do with the kind of play that uh, our players uh, were involved in. And that was a, a consistency that um, was really good to see. So um, really good win. Um, our guys got 24 hours to uh, to enjoy it, and, and now we're um, our focus is on another SEC opponent on the road, um, Arkansas. It's the Golden Boot, another uh, rivalry trophy. Um, of course, uh, they hold the trophy from last year's 16-13 win at Tiger Stadium, and uh, you know, obviously playing a team that uh, has a very um, prolific offense. And in terms of uh, players, it starts with their quarterback. Um, I think it's the fifth time now we've seen a big physical quarterback, K.J. Jefferson, 6'3", 240. You know, he's got 17 passing touchdowns, six rushing touchdowns. Um, you know, he's going to be a handful. Uh, another guy that we've got to be able to control um, what he does and, and, and get him on the ground. Um, Sanders, uh, Raheem, the, the running back, probably the biggest back that we'll see. Uh, 6'2", 227, leads the SEC in rushing. He's got over 1,000 yards. So that one-two combination with arguably the best center uh, in, in all of college football uh, in Stromberg, uh, a very good scheme, um, accomplished SEC wide receivers. Uh, this is a really good offense that we're going to have to slow down. Um, and Sam Pittman, I have a great deal of respect for him. Um, a very good football coach. Um, He'll have his football team ready to go. Drew Sanders on defense leads the SEC in sacks uh, with seven and a half sacks. Uh, really good football player, and, and they do a lot of really good things with him. He plays inside, but they move him to an outside position where he can come off the edge. We'll have to be able to uh, um, account for him. Got a couple former LSU players in their starting defense, uh, Landon Jackson, Dwight McLaughlin, uh, good football players that uh, – you know, obviously are, are playing well for them. And their special teams is really good. They do a lot of different things that we'll have to be alert for, uh, be on top of, um, and, and, and make sure that we do a really good job. We've, we're trending better there. We're going to have to continue to, uh, uh, to do a really good job. We've got 11 a.m. kickoff. Um, so uh, all those things, we've, we're used to it. We played it early. Uh, but we've got to obviously uh, be able to um, – focus on our next opponent, which I'm certain we'll be able to do that uh, with the kind of quality SEC opponent we have in, in Arkansas. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Brian, in the middle by the cameras. Yeah. Was Saturday night the biggest one of your career? I, you know, I don't – the biggest one of my career is going to be when we win a national championship. And so I, I'm focused on one thing when I came down here, and that's to win championships. Um, that's one game. Um, it was an exciting win, uh, but I, I don't put it in the, the, the category of, of the biggest. Um, I, I think I've, I've had uh, teams that have uh, achieved great things, and I think this team achieved a great victory because of where we were in January 
and, and what we've become. And so maybe for me, uh, probably as satisfying as a win for a group of guys that have committed themselves to a process and in that time have, have achieved a lot. Uh, Coach, when Mason Smith went down on that first defensive series of the year, you talked about DT depth being something you'd have to monitor. Um, what's your view of how Wingo and Jaquel and Roy have played this year as kind of a couple unsung heroes there in the middle? Yeah, obviously, uh, I, I think that, you know, anytime you lose a, a, a stalwart like, like Mason, um, you know, there's, there's cause for concern. Um, but I think what we've done really well is, is mix up the front. We've played some three down to take the pressure off of um, losing a, a player of that caliber. Um, and, and by doing so, um, have been able to rotate that, that defensive tackle position um, with three down and four down. And by, by doing so, obviously, you're playing with one nose. And uh, I think that's really helped us a lot. So. Uh, the loss was great, but I think we've managed it by being smart and tactical defensively, and those two guys have been outstanding. Coach in the middle right here. How impressed were you with your offensive line just throughout the game having to adjust to Bama's different blitzing looks? Yeah, they did a good job. There's no doubt. I mean, I think you know Brad has done a really good job of developing those guys uh, week in and week out. I think our backs have helped. Our tight ends helped in protection. Um, you know, it's not just those five guys, but, um, you know, clearly, you know, the, the biggest concern we had was their two end pass rushers. Um, and you got to give credit to the two freshmen. Um, you know, Emery and, and Will just do an incredible job playing and play out, focusing and refocusing, letting the play go and coming back to the next play and, and just with all out effort, sustained all out effort. Um, and, and and so it is five guys, you know. But um, you know, a lot of that emphasis is on O line awareness, and you know the guards are helping, the center's helping. Um, but again, I, I would say overall, um, just real good awareness up front and helping each other. Coach, right over here. Um, just what's the status of our money Goodwin, and just how the running back room is kind of shaking out going into the final quarter of the season. He's doing well. Um, you know, came back from a tough injury. Um, you know, I think, you know, when you look at certain games, um, you know, Coach Wilson has a sense of, you know, who he wants to go with. And, and he felt like, you know, he had a one-two combination that he wanted to stick with, much more physical group in there. Um, but Amani can play physical as well. I, I think. I think he was more interested in, and we did so much chipping with those backs. Um, he wanted a bigger presence in there, but we have great confidence and, and faith in Amani, and, and expect to see him, you know, continue to help us down the road. Hey Brian, um, I, there's always a lot of focus uh, from, from us in the media of new offensive concepts and philosophies and that sort of thing. But look at the two teams leading the divisions, and it seems like y'all both place a lot of emphasis on. On defense and 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 running the ball successfully. Just talk about the, the, the you know the, the how the bedrock of winning. You know, has it changed that much? You think? I, you know, look, I, I've been doing it a long time, and and I know that there are times where, you know, prolific offenses, you know, certainly get you, um, you know, a lot of wins. This is about not winning. This is about winning championships, and and. It's my belief that winning championships still, you've got to control the line of scrimmage at the end of the day. And so controlling the line of scrimmage is stopping the run and running the football effectively and, and exerting your will. So there has to be a physicality uh, about what you do. Um, yeah, I still think you can win games um, throwing the football and, and we'll have to win games you know, with that kind of offense. I said that earlier in the year, you can't win games throwing the ball for 85 yards. Um, then we came back and threw it for over 300. But the point I'm making is physicality starts and ends with stopping the run and running the football, and we're doing a better job there. Brian, with Harold Perkins this year, I mean, what have you seen in terms of just how and why he's been able to just handle everything that kind of comes with being a freshman and playing as well as he has this early? Uh, yeah, I think 
quite honestly, he's got the makeup to do that. He's a mature kid. Uh, I was talking to a couple of our coaches about him. He's a bit of a throwback, um, and, and a throwback in this sense. Just tell me what I need to do. I don't need all the other things, um, and, and, and I'll, I'll figure it out as I go. Um, it's kind of refreshing. He doesn't need to know all the whys. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't give the whys to our guys, and, and that's part of coaching today. You've got to explain a lot of things. He doesn't need a lot of the whys. Just point me in the right direction, I'll figure it out. And that's Harold Perkins. Um, he knows he's not perfect, but he makes up for a lot of those things with his athletic ability. So, you know, I think, I think that Matt's done a great job of kind of meeting him halfway with some of the things that he's not ready to do, but leaning heavily on some of the things that he has that are, uh, you know, innate traits that can come in and, and help us win right away. And I, and I think part of it is uh, he's a bit of a throwback in that you don't have to explain everything. Just line up here, do this, and you'll be fine. Coach, i got two quick ones, if you will. Um, everybody kind of wants to see behind the curtain. Was there an anecdote, a moment, a picture, or a joke, something somebody shared with you after the game that resonates with you? And then just you talked about the moment from January to now. Are you at all surprised at the buy-in? You know, that's the easiest way to describe it. But to have this many different transfers, guys that you didn't coach, commit to a new staff, is that the most striking accomplishment? Um, anecdotals, um, anything that uh, happened after the game. Um, I can't think of anything. Um, I, I just, I think I was just so happy for our players. And um, yeah, there were a couple of guys that, you know, texted me and said, you know, um, you know, they were uh, happy to uh, continue to do that and have people rush the field and they would take care of what the costs were. You know, I, I, I don't know if Scott needs to hear that or Kelly's here. She probably <laughs> doesn't want to hear that either. But, you know, there, there's some of those that, that come along the line. But I think I think more the, 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 the your second question is probably the, the, the question I'd I'd spend time on answering, and, and, and I'd, I've said this, and, and that, you know, the, the biggest thing this year is that they have jumped in the deep end and really didn't know how to swim, but they were not going to drown. They were going to find a way uh, to stay above water and kicking and doing whatever is necessary, and that's kind of built this this fight in them, this this toughness in them, and they haven't been perfect, and certainly we're not there yet, um, but... Um, they have such a pride in, in LSU. And when, when we first met, we said, look, we finished last. And that's not the standard. And you have a choice to do something about it. Um, you can continue to be bad. You can be average. You can be good, which everybody in this room is good. Um, or you can be elite. And they've made great choices along the way. So I'm really proud of them. Coach, is this a trap game, classic trap game here? I guess. I mean, I guess that's what they call it. Um, I've never bought into that because I think if it's a if it's a track trap game, you have not done a very good job with your football team in January and February. For example, January, February, March, we did not train indoors. We trained outdoors. So weather's not going to be a factor. We've been outside in 50 degree, 40 degree weather. Um, they know that. Um, you know, Arkansas is an SEC opponent that beat them last year. Um, so, look, it, your thoughts affect, you know, your actions, right? That affect your physiological response. So, we've been we've been working on how we think since day one, and um, it becomes a trap game if you're not thinking right. And we'll get our guys thinking the right way, and we'll prepare the right way, and. This is about a consistency. If they want to be a consistent program, they'll think the right way about this game. Hey, Coach, um, what has really allowed your run game, specifically Josh Williams, to flourish these past couple of weeks? Uh, well, I mean, I think we're opportunistic. Um, you know, I mean, we're not – look, we're, I think, about 185 yards a game, you know, which is – you know, the top third in the league. That's where we want to be. We're not, 
we're not where we need to be yet. We're getting better physically. But I think, you know, when you have a multi-dimensional threat like the quarterback, he provides you opportunities in the running game where he stretches the defense out. And when he does that, you have to worry about the quarterback. And, you know, examples were the linebackers have to flow over the top. That creates some seams and opportunities. Uh, so it's part of the system in itself. Um, you know, we're not running duo every play downhill, direct snap, and just, you know, knocking people back every time. But we're getting better at that. And I think it's just, you know, we're, we're committed to the run. We, we ran the ball late um, with, with efficiency. Um, I just think there's a commitment there is, is why we've been effective. You might have just already pretty much answered this, but you know, coming off such an emotional win, how, like in your experience, how, how is, have you learned there's a best way to get them to think the right way you're talking about? You know, the... Yeah, I mean, I think so. So you're preparing for these moments um, in the first week. Um, you you handle these by um, being consistent in everything that you do every single day. And nothing changed last week in the way we prepared, and nothing will change this week. I think, I think if there's, like if, if we had a lot of fanfare and sloganisms and changed a lot last week for Alabama, um, then maybe you worry about it a little bit. But we didn't do anything different last week than we did for Ole Miss or we did for any of the other teams. Our team is just evolving, and they're, they're playing with more of the traits necessary to be a consistent team that plays every snap the right way. So I think I'd be more concerned if we, you know, played with so much emotion that we were drained out, but that's how we're going to play. And, and that's kind of why I went for it. You know, I, I, I felt like our football team's going to do this more often. I, I trusted the way they played and I trusted that they were going to execute the play that we called, and I trust that they're going to execute um, next week uh, because they've been consistent over the past five months, and uh, I expect them to do the same. Hey, hey Coach, uh, winning the SEC West, now that it's truly in sight, is that something that's discussed this week, or is it kind of the Alabama thing of let's not treat this any differently because of something on the outside? Yeah, so there's – you know, our goal is to, to graduate champions. So part of this is they want to be champions. And, and they know that there are steps along the way in this process uh, of getting there. And, and so this week will be another step towards becoming a champion. And so let's, let's do the things that we need to do. And it starts with uh, today, you know, being early, being on time, um, you know, making sure that they're intentional about everything we do. So, yeah, the championships are important. That's what they're here for. And getting a class today is what they're here for. So it definitely starts, um, but, you know, we're not going to walk in with a PowerPoint on the SEC championship race and who's got what and, and all those things. But, yeah, it's, it's there. It's out there. They know, they know what they're going for. Hey, Coach, right here. Um, you know, the growth with Jaden has been pretty rapid these last several weeks, but just what kind of role does uh, Joe Sloan play in all that? I mean, do, can you speak to just the effect that he specifically has had on Jaden even in the last, you know, month or so? Yeah, so, you know, I'm with Joe every day, and he's a great communicator. So so the, what are the really good tenets of great teachers and great mentors? Um, he's um, He cares about his players. Um, he has – great relationships with everyone in that room. Uh, they trust him. Um, he provides the information and differently for each one as to how they learn. Um, he's knowledgeable about the things that he needs to get across to each one of those quarterbacks. He's demanding, never demeaning. Um, he's, he's all the things necessary um, to develop quarterbacks, and he's done a great job. Hey, Brian, would you mind just sharing a thought on Joe Fouché, Greg Brooks, what they've meant this year for you and what it's like for them going back to Fayetteville? Yeah, so certainly uh, this will be a, a big thing for them going back to Fayetteville as, as transfers. But, 
you know, first and foremost, what was appealing to us as we were putting this back together um, was to have SEC experience and a connection with the state of Louisiana. And both of those guys filled that, that box and checked that box for us. So what it means to them is that they play for LSU uh, and they have such a pride in being from the state of Louisiana. Um, and, and they want the golden boot back. And so as much as they'll have friends and uh, former players that they know, this will be much more about them um, wanting to win for, for LSU because that's why they came back here. Hey, Coach, two quick ones. What kind of growth have you seen from Mason Taylor throughout his freshman year? And do you have an update on Garrett Dellinger's status for this week? So there's been growth, you know, physically and and mentally. He's a freshman, um, and as you know, freshmen are, you know, growing physically. And the first big thing is, you know, he's put on over 20 pounds, you know, physically and and growing into his body. Um, I think the growth, you know, from a mental standpoint, has been the knowledge of the game. You know, he's he's been really good. I I'd be remiss. Um, you know, to, to, to not point out the fact that, you know, he's he's been put in a very difficult position where, you know, we're, a tight end has to do a lot, you know. Um, and we've been very fortunate to have a, an analyst uh, that has great experience at that position in Terry Malone. I think Terry Malone's an unsung hero for us on our staff. And, and you know, Terry was with the New Orleans Saints. You know, he's coached the tight end position. He's been an offensive coordinator. And to have an asset like that uh, to assist Coach Dembrock on a day-to-day -day basis has really helped develop Mason. And Terry's done a really good job. So having that mentor, having that person that's there, um, he can't coach him, but he's there as a mentor every single day. Now that's, that's really, really big uh, in his development. Um, Garrett Dellinger looked good. We worked him out yesterday. Um, much better. Uh, I think he's in a great position that he could play this weekend. Hey, Coach, uh, just right here. Um, since you guys already have the experience of playing a team like Florida with a big physical quarterback who can run, does having that experience sort of help you this week against a guy like KJ Jefferson? Yeah, each one of them has been a, a little bit different. I, I was just jotting down. I mean, we, we've had five of the guys that have been real big. You know, even Jackson Dart was a big, big kid, too. Um, it just seems like every quarterback that we've run into uh, this year has been a big physical quarterback. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, he um, he's a guy that they want to run, throw. Um, they don't, you know, he's, he's going to be actively involved in the run game. They're not afraid to run him at any time. We've seen him take off at the five-yard line in the air. I mean, he's, he's a physical player. So, um, again, we're going to have to do a really good job of containing him. Coach, going back to Alabama, there were several things the other night, late in the game and to overtime, that in the past in the series could have been the, oh, no, here we go again moment that deflated the team and deflated the stadium. But each time your team responded to that, I mean, is that kind of speaking to them not blinking and the adversity that they've overcome all year? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think that, uh, you know, I get a pulse of a, of a team, and, and I don't think that there's been a time uh, this year um, – that they haven't felt like they were going to come out victorious in some fashion. And that resolve, that resiliency is, is kind of baked into them. Um, and, and they just keep playing. So um, again, th those are the things that you feel on the sideline when you go up and down. You know, we, we came out of coverage one time all night and, and it was catastrophic. And I went up to the defensive backs. I said, listen, it's going to happen again because we're going to score here. So when we score, stay in coverage. He's going to scramble, stay in coverage. And they did a great job. They responded well. And, and um, again, I just think that their, their resolve is, is, uh, has been remarkable. Coach, something that got kind of overshadowed as the game went on was Jarek Bernard con versus in interception and how pivotal that was. Um, what makes him so versatile playing both corner and safety? Obviously, he's back at corner. He's been invaluable in terms of his ability to do some things for us uh, back at that safety position when we were shorthanded in particular. Um, so just uh, steady, 
right? Every day you know what you're going to get from him. Um, and look, I mean, he would tell you that there are some things that he'd like to do better, but, you know, our observations, um, he's, he's a guy that has been rock solid for us and, and consistent. And, um, you know, obviously we did a really good job of getting in front of uh, Bryce in that situation, kind of screening him, and uh, he threw under duress, and he was in a great position to make a big play. Just curious about your working relationship with Matt House. Do you turn him loose, let him go? What has impressed you with his ability each week to come up with a great game plan? Um, collaboration. You know, I, I like to collaborate with the defense during the game. Um, he's throwing off, throwing at me thoughts. Um, you know, what do you think? Should we should we go here? Should we pressure? Do you like zone? Should we drop eight? Um, so collaboration, same thing with Mike, you know, I, I prefer coordinators that, uh, cause I'm in the game, uh, that we're having collaboration during the game. Great. All right. Thank you.